The long awaited Blender 3.5 is here and with the wait finally over, after a series of tests and development, Blender 3.5 stands out strong with a sort of brand new pleasant updates, features and improvements. With lots of things for creators to play with, Blender 3.5 like we mentioned in the previous video is more of a milestone to what we will be expecting in Blender 4.0. And for those who like to get this, all you need to do is go to blender.org and click on the download button. And for what's new, there are lots of cool things that you can get with Blender 3.5 right now. Starting off, we looked at the hair. Hair is now a big thing in Blender owing to the fact that we now have the geometry hair tool that you can work with. Previously we talked about the brand new set of assets that you can work with that ships with Blender 3.5 the beta and right now things are even getting more interesting as you can now simply work with the nodes and this looks super nice. The folks at Blender Foundation have also done an introduction to hair assets for Blender, which is more of a step-by-step -step process of creating hair. And for those who like to play with the free hairstyle demo file, there are lots of things that you can do with that. Regardless of this, there's a beautiful Animal 4 demo, which is super interesting. And the way this actually works is you can simply create any kind of hair, fur, or even grasses with this. This is super flexible and powered by Geometry Node, which is incredibly great for very complex creations. And with 26 essential hair assets that comes with Blender 3.5, creating hair will now be as easy as clicking and dragging onto your viewport and modifying the hair that you want on the fly. And this cuts across different types, which includes the generation, which would allow you to generate hair curves, and you can also duplicate this if you want, and also make some interpolation. There's also the utility ones. The guides are also very interesting as you can create clumps, hair curves, and also braid the hair. We've also got the deformation, and with all of this set of geometry node assets, you can now easily create hair on the fly. And speaking about nodes, there's even more nodes that you can now work with with Blender Geometry Node. As 3.5 now ships with a huge set of them, which includes the new block attributes, there's also the new edge to face group, drag and drop of node groups into the viewports is now supported, and for close simulation there is a 25 faster close simulation using self collision, and in terms of working with nodes, you can now simply hold down alt and swap nodes across different connection points, you can now play with image nodes and get information of different nodes, you can now copy and paste nodes within a mouse position. Blender 3.5 would not be complete without the last minute feature that was announced sometime before beta was here. And that has to do with the vector displacement map. Now we did a full video about this where we explained how you can play with it and how you can even create yours by simply using tools like ZBrush or making them directly in Blender. And it's quite impressive to see that right now, this is now fully shipped with Blender 3.5. For those who like to try this, if you scroll all the way down, there is a demo file that allows you to explore all of the flexibilities that this comes with it. Additionally, this also comes with an add-on that allows you to create your own VDBs directly in Blender. Of course, we're going to make a full video about that, but for those who like to see the demo file and see what you can get with it, it is this simple. So if we simply fire up Blender, you would notice that we have a wonderful splash screen. A huge shout out to Nicole for making this possible. And there is a beautiful demo file for this. So once you open up the demo file, let's simply go ahead and hit the join button and join that. You would notice from here that we do have a set of VDBs just like you have with ZBrush. Additionally, you can go over to the brush section from here and you can play with this. If you're also thinking about just turning this off, you want to get your default brush, you can do the same thing. So I'm just going to turn this on and keep it as it is. Now with a VDB brush right here, if you simply select any of this, like right now we're having the ear, we can simply make sure that we have X turned on. If we go right around the corner, we can drag out an ear. And the same thing happens with every other part of the face. You can simply create however you want. And this is just very impressive that it is coming to Blender. And this is going to add so much value to Blender Sculpting. And like we talked about in previous videos, if you're thinking about playing with a strength, probably you want to push this even more, you can. So if you go over here, you can dial the strength all the way to two. So for example, if we go all the way back here and let me just find something that would look pretty nice. This looks good. So if we have our symmetry turned on, you would notice that this is what we're having at this point. If we crank this up all the way to two, actually, let's just crank this all the way to five for good measures and we click and drag, you notice that we have that. So yes, you can play with the values. Let's set this back to two and even get more with it. Something which is also very impressive and very cool for those who are using this for the first time to notice is this. If you're trying to create or you do have VDMs you want to play with, for you to work with them with your selected brush, you need to go all the way to textures and you need to set the mapping to area plane. If you set this to view, nothing happens. So you must set this to area plane for you to get the vector displacement turned on. Secondly, you also need to make sure that if you are thinking about clicking and dragging, just like we did. So for example, if we find the mouth for this one, and if we go in here, 
and we click and drag let's turn this off if we go in here and click and drag you notice that it comes all the way out okay so what actually influences these to come out is the stroke type if you set this to anchor you have that drag out effect but if you do set this to just the simple drag dot this is just going to be a leap somewhere within the face just like we have with the skills right here. This is something to keep in mind just in case you're thinking about working with this. And for those who like to see a much more detailed video about how to work with VDMs and all the things with VDMs, I'm gonna put links to the previous video which we made in the description so you can check it out. Now, if you remember, when we talked about the beta version of Blender 3.5, I did mention this. Although sometime within the year, we all anticipated that real-time composition was going to come over to Blender 3.5, but now within the beta, we are not seeing anything. And I kind of believe that they are saving this for a big review. I believe 3.5 should be a milestone as it gets to keep us on a stable ground and prepare us for things coming over to 4.0. And it's quite interesting to see that this played out exactly the way we talked about it. Because right now, the viewport composition is now available with Blender 3.5. So this has been a long time in the making. And it's pretty interesting to see it finally here. So at this point, for those who are thinking about doing some compositions directly in the viewport, now you can. And like we all know, this was part of the 2023 plan or roadmap from the folks at Blender Foundation. And the aim of this project was to develop a new GPU accelerator compositor that is both real-time and interactive. The first steps of this has been taken previously, and right now we're seeing these implemented in the master build of Blender. And this new compositor will be used to power the viewport compositor, which is a new feature that applies to the compositor directly in the viewport. And you can check out the list of features that this currently supports. Very interestingly, if you're thinking about playing with colors, if you want to create some inputs, right now the masking isn't there. In terms of filters, there's a good set of filters that is available. In painting filter isn't right here at this point, there's no anti-aliasing filter. But for most of the things you will be doing with your compositor, you would definitely find this. One thing which I think might be very essential to lots of people is the masking, which is currently not available. But you definitely find this a very useful feature when working with Blender 3.5. And for those who are asking, does this support Mac? Of course it does. And while we talk about Mac OS, it is worth mentioning that there is now a Metal implementation for Mac users. So at this point, you can now take advantage of Metal while working in Blender, and this works natively. So instead of using the OpenGL, which is something that has been existing over time, right now you can simply rely on the powerful Metal GPU that comes with Mac machines and you can use it. There are a bunch of tests that we've done before when this just simply came out. And at this point, there are certain things that actually gets you way better performances while some of them just gets you medium performances. And for what it's worth, this is just brilliant, especially for the real-time interactive viewport performance that it brings to Eevee. And when it comes to rendering, Cycles is also having a set of updates. Cycles can now use a light tree to more efficiently sample scenes with many lights. Now, if you're thinking about getting faster and nicer results in the shortest time possible, then you might want to consider playing with a light tree. And for those who are thinking about turning this on when rendering, what you need to do with a scene simply open right here, go over to the render section, and right here where we have Cycles, just simply make sure that you have your render engine set to Cycles, go all the way down, go to the lights, and turn on the light tree. And this is how you get it working. The spotlight is also getting a good update as right now, spotlights now support a non-uniform object scale matching how Eevee renders them as well. The spread properties in the cycles area life now mimics a gridded softbox which you can work with in real life, but it could also come with a couple of noise. But with 3.5, this noise is significantly reduced and it has a much more smoother render no matter the shape of the object. The open shader language can now be used in GPU. Unlike what we had previously, which was only CPU based, when you're working with optics, right now the open shader language now has support for both GPU and CPU as well. Of course, there are certain limitations and there is a documentation to detail all that. For animation and grease pencil, animation now has the extreme poses, which allows you to exaggerate the pose of a character by simply holding down E and with that you can go beyond 100%. At this point, if you simply drag to the left, you can subtract the pose. And if you hold on control while selecting and dragging a pose, you can flip this. This is very useful for those who like to flip poses, especially if you have only one blend shape created for that. There's a new Easy Ease, which exists for the graph editor, as it helps align keys on an exponential curve. And in terms of grease pencil, the natural drawing speed now ships with the build modifier, 
as it helps you play back strokes with the speed of the stylus when you are creating your drawing. The copy and paste function now works in multiple frame mode, there's also the offset modifier improvement, an interplay sequence operator improvement and a whole lot of others. So for those who also want to see these and check this out, you can simply refer to the documentation as well. Now with lots of things coming over to Blender 3.5, we mentioned that Blender 3.5 is fully aligned with the VFX reform platform of 2023 which makes it super easy for studios to integrate their pipelines when working with Blender. And this brings us to talking about USD, as there is a strong improvement in USD and support as Blender now allows you import and export USDZ files and there is also a support for importing USD shapes. In terms of add-on, there is also the GLTF several import and export improvements which is really cool and there is actually something that I think I did miss out on. So if we go all the way up, yes, this is the pre 3.0 post library system. This has been sunsetted. In the most literal term, this has been deprecated. Additionally, I think I missed on mentioning that motion parts can be set to update a custom range. And for Grease Pencil, this is a pretty nice update that I think you guys may like as well. It is the fact that Material Popover can now display fill color for fill materials. And just before we go, here are a few things that you might also want to know about Blender 3.5. When you're importing OBG files, right now there's an option for you to split by object, split by group, split by vertex group, and also validate the mesh. At this point, you can also import multiple curves and work with them. And if you're into Asset Browser, you would also notice that when you go over to Edit, go over to Preference, go over to where you have your file path, the Asset Browser section has been updated to be more of a list compared to what it looks like in 3.4. So for those who are thinking about exploring all of this and getting the most out of Blender 3.5, then you can simply go over to the link in the description where you can grab it. And for sure, you can also check out several links in the description that will direct you to various videos that are related to this one. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.